vitamins and pharmaceuticals on everybody. After all, we do live in a meat, dairy, and egg-eating world. You think maybe people need pills and people become sick because meat, cheese, milk, and eggs are pure and utter garbage with very little to no nutritional value whatsoever? And let me mention something quickly about the environment and world hunger. Because a lot of people keep telling me that they care more about humans than animals. So they can never become vegan. As if eating some tofu today instead of a hamburger is going to mess up your human rights activities for the day. This is especially puzzling to me in many ways. But mainly because meat, dairy, and egg eating societies are the main cause of world hunger as they continuously feed 50% of the world's crops back to the 60 billion land animals that we kill in the meat, dairy, and egg industries every year and the tens of billions of marine animals that we kill on fish farms every year instead of using those crops to feed 7.5 billion people. You can do the math on this one yourself. You don't have to be Einstein to figure out this equation. Every two to three seconds, some human on this planet dies from starvation. That's a fact. Here's another fact. Chickens, turkeys, pigs, and cows, they never miss a meal. Meat, dairy, and egg eating is the worst form of human and animal abuse. And when it comes to pure environmental destruction, air pollution, water pollution, deforestation, nothing competes with animal agriculture. There is no such thing as a meat, dairy, or egg-eating environmentalist. But check out the two environmental sections on my website for more detailed info on that, because I want to spend a little more time right now condemning the dairy industry. Because when it comes to cruelty, I think there's more cruelty in a piece of cheese, in a glass of milk, in yogurt, than there is in meat. First of all, most hamburger meat comes from the dairy industry. When cows can't produce huge amounts of milk after three to seven years, slaughterhouse. If given a chance, God forbid, cows can live to be 18 to 25. And cows are like all female mammals. And listen, I don't mean to be speaking down to anybody if that's how you're taking this. It's just that when I'm talking to addicts about their addictions, addicts have a tendency to become irrational and illogical. I know you understand this concept. You just never think about it when it comes to the animals. Female mammals can only produce and give milk during or after pregnancy. So once a year, every cow and every dairy farm is raped to impregnate her long steel device shoved in her vagina to inject her with bull semen. And sometimes it just use a bare hand to do it. Got to get that milk flow going somehow. And later on, after she gives birth, her newborn baby is stolen away. A couple months later, they repeat the process all over again. One of the worst screams I have ever heard. And I've heard them all firsthand. I've been to slaughterhouses, vivisection labs, behind the scenes of every circus and rodeo that ever passed through Michigan. One of the worst screams I've ever heard, stealing newborn babies from their mothers. And why would they steal newborn babies from their moms? Well, the dairy industry can't have calves sucking up all that milk that was meant for them. And they'd rather sell it to you instead. Every time you have dairy, some calf does not. And mother cows make milk for one reason, for their babies. Case closed forever. No debate, no discussion, the jury is in. They certainly don't make milk for baby elephants and baby orangutans and baby hedgehogs, baby rabbits, baby rats, baby humans, adolescent humans, or adult humans. This body of ours has absolutely no need for cow milk, like it has absolutely no need for giraffe milk, and zebra milk, and rhinoceros milk, and hippopotamus milk, camel milk, goat milk, horse milk, pig milk, dog milk, or cat milk. The only milk that we ever need comes from our own mother, our species. That's it. And after the first few years of life, we never need one drop of milk ever again. But if you want to include some kind of, some kind of milk in your diet like I do, it is finally time for some good news.
because I can see it on some of your faces. I can sense it in the room. You're like, Dan, did you drive all the way from Michigan to New York to verbally abuse us? Lighten up, man. Actually, I came here today to show you what you've been missing because everyone's got those blinders on nice and tightly. Everything you like to eat and drink, the taste, the smell, and the texture, we got a vegan version for you. It's been veganized. There's soy milk, rice milk, almond milk, hemp milk, coconut milk, oat milk, hazelnut milk, sunflower milk, and flax milk. You can mimic the taste and texture of meat with tofu and tempeh and seitan. Plus, we got all those vegan meats made from plant products, not from chemicals. What about ethnic food? Middle Eastern food, falafel, tabbouleh, hummus, majedra, lentil soup. Asian food, stir-fried vegetables and tofu. Just remember when ordering Asian dishes, always order those dishes without fish sauce added to it. Indian food, alu gobi. It's cauliflower, potatoes, and curry. It's delicious. Chana masala, chickpeas, and tomatoes. Mexican food, rice and beans and guacamole. Italian food, pasta, spaghetti, and pizzas without cheese. Unless you got a cool place in town, and New York has many that have vegan cheese on the menu. Ethiopian food, split peas and lentils. Check out my website for tips on what to eat and where to eat. I have a restaurant section, I have a recipe section, I have a veg shopping guide, and an athlete section too. And don't think I don't watch your faces when I'm up here. That's what I do when I'm preaching. I'm watching all your expressions. How come when I talk about tofu and pizzas without cheese? Boy, catch a couple people in every classroom. Start to wrinkle up their noses a little. Eyes get a little wide and bulge and start glancing around the room with your friends like, Tofu is this guy crazy? <laughs> Tempe must be out of his mind. What the hell is Satan? Satan, by the way, not Satan, Satan. It is wheat meat. It is meat that is made from wheat. So how come tofu and even fruits and veggies are considered gross to most people, but meat? Time to break meat down for everybody. You got five components to meat. Blood, flesh, veins, muscles, and tendons. The cut up corpse of a dismembered body? How does meat not qualify as disgusting and gross to everybody? How in the world is a liquid, a liquid that oozes out of a cow's udder, a secretion that's loaded with pus that drips from an animal's body, how is this not considered gross? Oh, and let me tell you about the pus and the cow's milk. It'd be my pleasure. When you hook machines up to the udders of cows three times a day to suck them dry, those machines cause massive amounts of infections and irritations on the inside and outside of the udder. Then when you add all the bovine growth hormone and all the genetic engineering that's been done to a cow's body to make sure she produces huge amounts of milk, which always leads to another infection, the machine doesn't know what not to suck out. Pus and mucus and infections right into the milk. And yes, milk is pasteurized. But exactly when did pasteurization become a removal process? Last time I checked, it was a sanitation process, meaning you're only sanitizing pus. And if you want to look this up online, well, you don't think the dairy industry would ever use the word pus when they write about this problem in their own trade journals, do you? Now they're going to deceive you again. Look up the scientific term for pus. Somatic cell count. S-O-M-A-T-I-C. Oh, and let's talk about some other disgusting things that you guys love to eat. Did you know that the backside of a bird is called a cloaca? C-L-O-A-C-A. -A. It was the opening scene in the video. You can pop that back in if you want to see it. Uh, it's one hole. It is one hole, but it serves many purposes. It's the poop hole. It's the pee hole. It's the vaginal fluid hole. And it's the hole where your omelets and scrambled eggs come from. Yeah, I remember back in the day, I used to love my scrambled eggs with shit sprinkles, urine splatter, and goo juice all over it too. Because, you know, when you crack that shell over the bowl, all those microscopic particles fly every which way. And if you guys think it's normal and natural to eat something that's been marinating in feces and urine for hours and hours, I got a brand new challenge for everybody. I always like to have a new challenge every single semester. This is the egg challenge. When you get home from school later today, I want you to go to the bathroom. Fill her up. 
every day. Don't flush though. Then I want you to stroll on over to the kitchen, open up the fridge, grab yourself an egg, take it back to the toilet. If you even have the courage to stick your hand in there and grab it back out, and you can wash it when you're done, bleach it, do whatever you want to it, are you still going to want to eat it? And that's your own shit. That's your waste. Now you're talking about a hen that you don't even know her butthole? And what about vomit? Come on, you guys love vomit. You adore some vomit in, on, and all over your food. Better give this one a pretty name. No, no one's going to want to buy and eat vomit unless we call it honey instead. Honey comes directly from a bee's stomach. It's regurgitated right through a bee's mouth. You can look that up with any wildlife biologist, but nobody wants to eat bee vomit nut Cheerios. We want honey nut Cheerios, so we lie to ourselves and play euphemism games. The standard diet of a meat, dairy, and egg eater is blood, flesh, veins, muscles, tendons, cow secretions, things that come out of a hen's ass, and bee vomit. And we're not done yet. I'm not going to let you off the hook that easily while I got you here today. Because we top it all off, in my opinion. Because every single year when people start cooking turkeys for the holidays. Boy, people take a dead turkey, carve out a really big hole in that dead turkey's ass, take some stuffing, and shove it inside their dead empty ass, and use their little dead ass as an oven to bake some bread. Somebody else's dead empty bacteria laden ass to make bread. Ass bread? And people think vegans are weird? Because we eat tofu? I tell people one of my favorite meals nowadays. Yams and barley. Hook me up with some yams and barley for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And I'm a happy guy. I know how most people are, though. I tell them this, and they're like, what? You just eat vegetables and grains for dinner? Yeah, I don't know, man. That's kind of weird. <laughs> okay. But somebody else's rib cage sitting on your plate, that's not weird. Severed legs, sliced up thighs, and mutilated breast on your plate isn't weird and doesn't make you think twice. Is bestiality weird to anybody? Doing sexual things with animals? Because I used to think everybody thought so, but not even close, my meat, cheese, milk, egg-loving friends. Because you engage in carnivorous bestiality on a daily basis. Sometimes multiple times a day. You eat things that come out of a hen's ass and shove things into a turkey's ass. You eat breast, legs, and thighs, and then you pay somebody else to sexually molest a cow and squeeze her nipples for you so you can steal her milk. Man, you guys are obsessed with bird asses and cow tits. Enough already. Seriously? Is it possible to step into the 21st century and stop mimicking the behavior of cave men and cave women? You got a choice today. When you leave this room, you can choose to become radically kind, to never intentionally harm another animal for breakfast, lunch, or dinner ever again. These animals have never violated you or taken advantage of you in any way. The least you can do is return the favor. Or stay radically cruel. Keep the status quo as is. Make sure animals have their babies stolen from them. Make sure their horns are cut off, beaks sliced off, testicles ripped out. Make sure they're raped. Make sure they never experience one drop of human kindness and make sure there's a knife in their throat every second of every minute, of every hour, of every day, for eternity. I hope you make the right choice. Isn't it rough enough being an animal on this planet with us around? As we claim everything for us. The land is ours. We pollute the air, the water, destroy the forest and the mountains. Do we have to maximize the cruelty that they already endure by eating them on top of it all? You want to talk about pouring salt into somebody else's wounds. 98%, and I want to leave you with this stat, 98% of animals who are abused and killed on this planet are abused and killed by the meat, dairy, and egg industries. 
the least we can do is minimize the cruelty by living a vegan lifestyle. Well, thank you guys for listening. I do appreciate you opening this out there today.